today is a big day. We are headed to CNY Fertility to get our test results for our blood work. I'm really, really nervous. Excited, but nervous. Very anxious. And um, I rolled away. So the results that we're going for today are basically results that are going to determine whether we're a great candidate for IVF. Um, some of the tests that they that they ran with my blood work, that will let them know if I have any eggs left. And if so, how many eggs do I have? So it's just, it really falls under the same, the like one big umbrella. And the bottom line is, will today's blood work determine if I'm a great candidate for IVF? and where we go from here, what are our next steps. So we just want good news, so we're just believing for good news. I'm gonna start crying. I'm sorry. That's okay, this is a very emotional path, very emotional. <sighs> Every day across the country, some woman is being asked the intrusive question of, when are you starting a family? Girl, you know you're getting older. When are you having a baby? So the optimal time for a woman to try and get pregnant is during her 20s and 30s. But that is also the time when a woman, a professional woman, is either peaking in their career or still pursuing their career. In my 20s and 30s, I was in medical school, residency, and for me, that wasn't the optimal time for um, to get pregnant. When I was growing up, you know, we really never had conversations with your parents about reproduction. Um, the only thing that you were told when you were young is you don't get pregnant. I have never felt a calling to have children, and I just had to accept that's who I am. When I made the decision to not have kids, I was 43. Or I would say, maybe I can stretch it out. Maybe I could go to 44, maybe I could go to 45. Hell, maybe I can go to 50. You know, and then you start seeing stuff in um, the media, celebrities, you know, they're having these babies at 48. Um, then, you know, people start seeing church folks, you know, Sarah had a baby at 54. You know, after my first um, myomectomy, our fertility specialists insisted that we'd be able to get pregnant like that. She felt like it was gonna be an on switch. And, um, you know, after I recovered, Things weren't happening, but I had so many people around me telling me, oh, don't worry, don't stress it. You know, it's the stress that's causing it. Why? Ah, the fibroids came back. African-American women lead the world in hysterectomies. And what if you can't have a baby? What if I can't have a baby? Then that means that's not what I was here to do. When you have a miscarriage, you're supposed to pick up and keep going because that's what they did in slavery. They just picked up, kept picking cotton, kept going. I was really confused about why people didn't talk about it, but I think it's just, it's taboo because you feel like a failure. At the age of 38, I went to a center and learned about the process of preserving my eggs. And I was a bit concerned because they don't recommend you do it at that age. Just having the conversation and thinking about all the different ways you can mother, I think we need to talk about and think about more. 